What separates Icon boats from the rest? Is it the styling? Is it the functionality? Is it the ride? We've been told we're the best built boat in the market. We put together the best team in the industry, inside the factory and out in the field. From the legacy of Hydra Sports to the creative ingenuity of HCB, it's a collaboration of years of experience. This is what we're made of. I'm Chuck Pippen with Icon Boats. I'm here in Tennessee at the Icon Factory. I'm with Andrew Clements. Today we're talking about the ergonomics of our cockpit, our cockpit design, our cooler, and our e-seat seating system. We're standing right here in front of a cooler that's been chopped in half and you can see everything about it. Tell us about our cooler and why it was designed the way it was. So going back to one of our other videos, that integrated liner in the hull gave us the ability to have this big space to fit a large cooler. It's big enough to handle a case of water and 20 pounds of ice and keep it cool all day. Even at the end of the day, you can pull that cool water out of there and drink it. Uh, we did insulate the outside of the cooler as well as the lid. So it's got similar design aspects of things like common coolers you see in the market today. I've had a lot of boats in the past that did not have insulated coolers and the ice is gone, especially in Florida where I live, that ice is gone by 10 a.m. I believe that cooler is about one and a half cubic feet. Is there any significance? I've noticed that when you open the lid, the, it just stays open. Is it just, is there any significance with that? We do use a, a friction hinge, so it's able to hold that lid in the open position. Uh, we also put a little undercut or relief on it, so it's easy to kick it up with your foot and close it if you needed to as well. But that area, that big cooler lid that you see, also doubles as our fourth seating position. It's great also with the, as far as ergonomics go when you're stepping off the front deck and down into the cockpit. It, some boats have a, will have a little narrow step, so we get a lot of comments about how much people like that extra wide step. And this is a cutout of an LX here. Is anything else or any other storage compartments insulated in the cockpit area? on an LX. On the LX, the, the glove box that you see between the two uh, cockpit seats, that, that's also insulated. It's got a drain in it. You could use that as a cooler if you needed to. I did, one of our owners that's contacted me is actually using this as storage and he fishes by himself. And so he's using that smaller, uh, the smaller glove box as his cooler. So that's also with friction hinges also. All right, so now we're moving into our cockpit area, which is the, the cooler's in the cockpit and the glove box is in the cockpit but it's a very unique cockpit with a lot of room. Can you explain to everyone how, what went into the design of that? So it's a combination of also the fuel tank when we think about the cockpit, because we designed that fuel tank to maximize volume and, kind of, and we wanted to keep it over the center of gravity so you didn't have much shift as you were burning down fuel throughout the day. But the biggest part for us was a lot of ergonomic studies, looking at what's out there in the market we had people on boats, tape measures, measuring different seat heights, seat back heights, seat widths, step heights, step widths, just trying to find what makes the most sense to maximize the comfort and the space that you're gonna be working on throughout the day. Leading into our console, or helm as it's frequently referred to, what went into the design of the console with our easy access hood that's available on the LX, um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, that was similar. Just starting on the backside, what you see when you're sitting in the seat, trying to get the right angles to show you our seven inch display or five inch display and the steering angles. And then we wanted to give people access because as we talked about in one of our other videos, we try to make this easy to rig and service. So you're able to open the dash hood on the front and you have access to your electrical connections that you have for your graphs. Uh, you have the NEMA backbone that's in that location. Our PDMs are located there. So it makes it really easy to, if you got to troubleshoot on rigging or if you're even doing any service or installations down the road. A lot easier than laying up underneath your console and reaching up inside there. Correct. There's also access underneath this dash, but we try to make it quick. So all you have to do is turn the latch, open it up, and you're right there able to get at what you need to. Did anything go into the visuals of the, the captain or the driver of the boat? What he's able to see? on his dash around was was that a part of the thought process yes there are some actual regulations that have to do with visibility from the helm so we made sure we address those up front 
But then beyond that, it was just trying to get you something that helped protect you from the wind as you're flying down the lake and made that a comfortable ride. But it wasn't obstructing your view either throughout the day as you're taking off out of the hole or moving around trying to find that fish. Something people don't think about very often because they're always just standing on it, but talk about our cockpit floor. Is that, is that unique? Is, I, mine drains quickly. We get a lot of rain in Florida. I've noticed how much quicker it drains than previous boat brands or models that I've had. Can you talk about that a little bit? We did, and we looked at the design waterline and the angle you want your boat to be at and trying to make sure that still allows for drainage both off the deck area and into the cockpit area. So we have drains strategically placed and some gutters built into this boat to allow it to drain in a lot of different situations or scenarios of the boat. Yeah, I noticed uh, there's a little trough in the rear that kind of feeds into the middle. Is that, was that, because in past boats, we have one drain in the middle and if the boat never sits dead level, if somebody's fishing on this right. side and you have water piled up. So was that a thought process there? Right, that's part of the drainage system that we have throughout the boat. I Just, mean, we have it on the deck, the aft deck, and then that cockpit area. So it's meant to funnel water towards a local drain and then down into your bilge and out. With our extra deep gutter system, everything feeds down into the cockpit, which feeds down into the bilge that's mm -hmm. then pumped out. Right, the other thing that we did that's a little bit different is we don't put carpet we don't put carpet in the cockpit that's not even an option no we go with a with a eva foam pad in there that's nice dries quickly it dries I've, quickly i've noticed the decks on our boat on, on our big giant front deck because the base of those lids are not resting on the fiberglass they're basically suspended over our deep gutter system mm -hmm. that allows it to drain much quicker than some uh, boat brands where the lid deck or the base of the lid is resting on the deck. It seems to hold water more. And ours just drains right down across the cooler lid down into the drainage and it's gone from the boat quickly. Right, that helps promote drainage. But another reason why we did that actually is if you're fishing in cold weather and you do have that water or spray coming on, it'll help keep your lids from freezing down into the deck. Because if you've ever had to sit there with a heat gun or something to try to pry your lids open, you'll appreciate that. I feature. have done that with a hairdryer. With a hairdryer. Yeah. So we covered the majority of our cockpit, but most of the time when you're in a cockpit, you're sitting on something. And that's our seat here, our e-seat seating system. Can you explain to everybody how this is more than just another boat seat? So similar to we talked about the cockpit ergonomics, we really studied the seat itself, the relationship between the driver and the steering wheel, the driver's feet and the cockpit sole. We were trying to find the right proportions to make that where it's easy in, easy out. You don't have to really do a pull up or muscle up to get out of the seat. So we wanted to create our own seat. Now going through that does mean you have some regulations and tests that you got to go through. ABYC has some requirements for seat design. So we kept that in mind as we de developed our own seat. It's a fiberglass shell. It's a fully infused fiberglass shell. And then we have a, a vacuum formed insert that is designed around our custom seat suspension system. We use six springs in there. We designed our own spring plates and that mechanism there is to help reduce the impact loads when you're out in the lake running and you hit waves. So that's our suspension system that we looked at. Part of that, we looked at the market, looked at what's available. And a lot of times we came across things and said, you know what, I think we can make a slight improvement on that and create our own product. So that's really how this seat design evolved. So you mentioned it has a fully infused fiberglass shell. Can you tell us more, what are the standards that that's built to? Is it, is it just as strong as the hull? Does it have anything to do? Is it built with the same materials as the hull? So I mentioned those regulations. There are some pull tests you have to do. A quick example is these handles that are on the side. A grab handle has to withstand a 400 pound pull test. So each of these handles had to pass that. You have 400 pound drop tests that go on this. And there's also a seat back pull test to make sure that your seat is strong enough as far as loads going towards the back. So we went through that as we came up with the lamb schedule and the design for this. Uh, this infused setup it includes core so there's stiffness in specific areas we also use inserts down towards the bottom where we install our slider so both port and starboard seats get their own manual slider on the lx both seats are, are sliders they're not just fixed position correct both seats are sliders on the lx what about the vlx 
The VLX has the ability to make a movement. It's not this same slider, but there is a mechanism that we created that allows you to get some adjustment if you need it. But keep in mind that hot foot's also on a slider plate, so you can make that adjustment. And I noticed uh, the handles are on the seat. So on the co-angler side, what are the advantages of that? Because in some other boat brands that I've been in, this, the handles aren't necessarily mounted on the seat. They're mounted sometimes up on the side of the gunnel and way down below, and it's, a, it's an awkward position. Was that a thought process of where the handles went? Correct. That that really came from a lot of us novices being out there with Brent Butler the first time flying around on the water, wide open throttle and figuring out where do I even grab to hold on. And that gave us the idea, the most e convenient spot to put these was right on the seats. Of course, that meant you had to have a robust seat to be able to handle those loads. But that's really what led to this. And it also keeps your arms free. You're not interfering if you are the co-angler when you have the rods stored on the side of the boat. There's, there's no interference there. You're not trying to reach through them or around them. And I noticed this is a very upright seating position here in past boat. I've been in about every brand of bass boat that's out there. And I notice a lot of the times when you actually utilize the seat back, you're in about a third of the way recline. They don't necessarily look like that until you sit in it. And when you get back in the, when you're driving the boat, you're kind of hunched over this way because if you utilize the seat back, you're reclined back. Is that a, was that, done purposely? Yes, that was part of that ergonomic study we talked about. We tried to find a good angle that was comfortable and gave you good visibility. And we went through the design process. We actually created, a, it's called a buck, but it was a, a representation of what the cockpit was gonna be. And then we mocked up our seat in there and went through a range of different people that worked at the company, big and small, tall and short. We had them all sit in this and try to get the best feedback to come up with something that was a good angle position to sit in that wasn't too close to the steering wheel that allowed you to get in and out. In fact, one of the first things we did, we found it was almost too cumbersome to do that. So we made a modification before we came up with the final design for this. I mean, speaking of the ergonomics, what about like, I noticed it narrows to the top. Was that just so it looked cool or was it visual for visual aspects? Part of that styling, but it also makes it easy if you are trying to look over your shoulder real quick. Maybe you're trying to check a jack plate reading or see if there's a boat coming up. So it makes it easy to be able to rotate and look over your shoulder. Well, that's our e-seat seating system, our cockpit, our cooler, the ergonomics of our cockpit and how it was designed. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more information on how our boats were built, check out these videos.